we have covered quite a lot of the device manager in Windows XP, Vista and 7. Here we shall be looking at Windows 8 and 8.1, just to get used to the interface more than anything else. To access the device manager as with the other apps, it can be done in many different ways. If you're in the desktop area, then the quickest way would be to right click on the start button, then it can be accessed through the drop down menu. Again, through the start menu, through computer management, then device manager. So just with the start drop down menu, there are many possibilities. If we were in the start screen, we would have other options to access the device manager. We can go through the control panel, hardware and sound, then device manager. If we click on the top category in the device manager, in our example it is Dave, then on action the first option is scan for hardware changes. As soon as Windows starts, Device Manager examines the computer hardware and tries to configure what it detects so that you can use the hardware. Scan for Hardware Changes orders up an immediate examination of the installed hardware and install the new drivers if any are found. Windows will normally examine the PCI bus on startup and in theory the USB bus once every 90 seconds. Clicking scan means do it now, don't wait for the regular scheduled scan. If we open the network driver category, then right click on the existing driver, in our example it is the Intel Pro 1000 MT desktop adapter, right clicking on this will produce a drop down menu. The two options that we are interested are disable and uninstall. Let's disable the driver first. Here we can see the message disabling the device will cause it to stop working. We shall click on yes. As we can see here, as with the other versions of Windows, this item has now been flagged to indicate that it's been disabled. So this item can no longer be used. Bear in mind, it has been disabled, not removed. Notice the red cross over the network icon on the taskbar. Let's re-enable the device so the flag has been removed from the driver and the red cross is no longer on the network icon found on the taskbar. So this would be handy if we had a confliction between devices. In other words, two devices are using the same resources within the PC. Now let's remove the driver. So we right click, then click on install. Click on OK when the message you are about to uninstall this device from your system. We should be aware that the driver has been installed and the device has not been disabled. The difference being is without the driver, the device will no longer function as the manufacturer has intended it to. We would use this if we found that the driver caused the device not to function correctly. This can be easily done since most manufacturers are constantly updating devices and drivers. And sometimes, although the driver may seemingly install without any problems, it may cause the device not to work. In our example, notice how the category has been removed from the device manager. Since it is now empty, and as expected, a red cross has appeared over the network adapter on the taskbars once again. Now we shall scan for new hardware changes, and the driver will be selected to suit the device, and it is reinstalled. In our example, the network adapter is fully compatible with Windows 8. However, if it had not been, you would have been prompted at this stage to insert the driver disk. But let's just rewind this and see what has happened. We clicked on action, then scan for new hardware. The device appears and an exclamation mark is placed on it. This is a sign that Windows has discovered the new device but not found a suitable driver at this time. Window then checks for a suitable driver. If one is not found, the user would be prompted for a driver disk. In our example, since the device is Windows 8 compatible, they are found and installed. The next option, Add Legacy Hardware, will scan the computer for devices 
that do not conform to the legacy plug and play, also known as PNP. Microsoft defines this as plug and play standard required configuration of the devices to be handled by system firmware, which then provides details of the resources allocation to the operating systems. This process is invoked at boot time. When the computer is first turned on, compatible devices are identified and assigned non-conflicting addresses and interrupt request numbers. Basically, if the device can be recognised by the operating system during boot, it will attempt to install compatible drivers and allow the device to use certain resources. If not, it will prompt the user for the manufacturer's drivers. In the early days of Windows, as far back as Windows 95, problems occurred in the integration between the legacy non-PNP devices and the PNP system which caused them to fail, leading to the terminology having historically been referred to as plug and pray. Legacy non-PNP devices that do not conform to these standards uses the add legacy device option allows the user to install the drivers automatically or manually. An example of this would be the Lexmark Pro 4000 series colour inkjet printer. From action, click on add legacy hardware. The wizard will then start. Notice the message if your hardware came with an installation disk, it is recommended that you cancel to close this wizard. Windows is prompting you to install the drives that came with the device. Let's assume we don't have them, so we'll click on Next. Here we have two options. Windows will attempt to install the drivers automatically or manually. If we leave the first option selected, Windows will try and look for the new device. So let's click on this to see the results. As expected, it did not find it since we have not actually connected it. Now it will prompt us to install it manually. Click on Next. Now this is where the inexperienced engineer has the advantage. First you will need to know the type of device that is being installed. If we scroll down we can find a category called printers and this would be the most logical place to start. However the Lexmark Pro 4000 is classified as an image device. Let's select this and click on next. Now we need to know the manufacturer and this is Lexmark, so this is selected. Down the right hand side are the model numbers. We know this is a Pro 4000, so we scroll down to find this. This is selected and we click on next, then next again. Finally, finish. This device has now been added to our device manager. You may have now noticed that the driver has a yellow exclamation on it. This is due to the fact that we do not have the device connected so an error report has been generated. Another option is hidden devices not shown in the device manager by default. It includes devices that were physically removed from the computer but whose registry entries were not deleted. This could be for example a video adapter that was installed and then the device removed from the computer but the driver for the device still exists within the device manager. These devices are considered as non-present devices. Some system drivers are also hidden since interfering with these can cause the system to become unstable or crash. Just to tidy things up we shall remove the Lexmark Pro 4000 series by right clicking on it and then from the drop down menu click on install then confirm the removal.